In this video, I'm going to talk about the water pressure accumulator tank I added to my RV. Anytime you boondock or are otherwise not hooked up to shore water in your RV, you're going to be relying on the onboard water pump. And most of these water pumps are some kind of a diaphragm pump, and they're actually pretty loud when they run. So being able to not have it run as much and also not have it cycle on and off helps make the uh, RVing experience more pleasant. We had a couple of things that I was trying to address. First one was that uh, in a normal system that has no kind of accumulator tank, every time you turn on any kind of water, the pump is then going to turn on as well because it needs to feed pressure. This includes just a small amount of water, like if you're uh, flushing the toilet or just turning on a faucet to rinse your hands. Um, the other thing is that I upgraded the water pump in my RV I did another video on this one. If you're interested, I'll put a link in the description. And so now it runs at 55 PSI instead of 45 and is higher flow. Both of those are very nice, especially when taking a shower, or washing dishes, things like that. But what it also ended up meaning was that the pump was cycling continuously whenever you had any of these things on. So this accumulator tank uh, corrects both of those issues. What an accumulator tank is, is essentially a tank with a diaphragm in it and it basically stores water pressure so that when you turn on any kind of water source some of, of the pressure is released so if you are only turning on water for a short period of time uh, it will not make the pump turn on and when the pump does turn on it will run for a longer period of time and then it will be off for a longer period of time you can use any kind of accumulator tank the bigger that you can fit, the better. I went with a household two-gallon tank. I'll put a, a link in the description. I bought it off of Amazon. And I've been very happy with how this works. They make ones that are, are called RV-specific tanks. As far as I can tell, the only difference is that they're smaller, which means they don't hold as much uh, water pressure accumulation, and they cost more. So for me, this worked really well. Installation, you can install it anywhere on the cold side. Uh, for me, this little cavity right here next to the water heater was perfect, so this is what I did. I'll turn the switch on here and you can see how long it runs for. So you can see that it runs for a much longer period of time, and then if I turn the water on... The water can then run for quite a long period of time before it turns on. See, the pump just turned on now. So definitely a lot more pleasant than it's cycling on and off constantly. If your RV is like mine, it's plumbed using just standard PEX and uh, PEX fittings. So I just bought some of those and was able to crimp them all together. Total cost of the project was under $50 and definitely goes a long way towards making the RV uh, more pleasant when boondocking. So hopefully you found this interesting. Uh, thanks for watching.